Today, I am flying on the number one ranked business class seat in the world. The Qatar Airways Q Suite has won the best business class award a record breaking seven times now and can cost up to $9,000 to fly. I'll be sharing exactly what this onboard experience is like, including the suite itself with a closing door, the fine dining, and the lie flat bed. I'm not used to this much luxury. People around me are gonna hate me. Clearly, I don't belong here. Today, I'll be flying 15 hours from Los Angeles, California to Doha, Qatar. Upon landing, I will check out the beautiful Qatar Airways Business Class Lounge and do something that I have never seen in an airport before. After saying goodbye to my supportive wife, Chloe, it's time to get checked in. I believe there is a separate check-in area for business and economy. There are probably over 100 people waiting in line for the economy check-in behind me and only three in line here in the business class line. How are you? Thank you so much. Have a nice day. 9K, baby. Let's go. I love seeing business class on my boarding pass. In case you needed a sign to enroll in TSA PreCheck, here it is. Check out the difference in these lines. And for the travel hack of the day, TSA PreCheck is actually free to get with many travel credit cards. Also, if you've ever wondered what it looks like inside of one of these airport x-ray machines, here you go. Pretty exciting, huh? Unfortunately, there's no Qatar Airways lounge here at LAX, but through some partnership programs, they made sure that business class passengers are still taken care of. My ticket actually gets me access into the Qantas business lounge. So let's check this place out. Although not nearly as opulent as what I'll experience later in Doha, this lounge was actually pretty nice. It has a small buffet area and plenty of seating. I plan on not eating too much in here today to save room for all of the delicious food on the flight, but then I looked down and saw how much food I actually had. It all looked too delicious, I guess. I had some curry with rice, mac and cheese, and pumpkin ginger soup. This experience was a nice start to the trip, but it's only going to get better from here. After getting some work done, it is finally time to head to my gate and experience this bucket list flight. I recently flew on Emirates first class, and Emirates and Qatar go back and forth every single year on which one wins the best business class in the sky. So I'm so excited to see the differences between the two airlines. It's time to board. As I handed my ticket to the gate agent, the first noticeable difference was spotted. When flying on Emirates, there is a separate boarding tunnel for premium passengers, while here everyone boarded together. Don't get me wrong, it's not that big of a deal at all, but still a difference. And the staff was very friendly as I squeezed by. I get my first glance at my home for the next 15 hours, and I can't help but feel so excited. Each and every time I have the opportunity to fly in a premium seat, it just puts a smile on my face. This business class is laid out in a one-to-one seating arrangement. My window seat, 9K, is a rear-facing seat, which I haven't experienced before. The middle seats have a divider that comes down if you're traveling together with someone. Or Qatar Airways has what's called the quad, where you can turn four middle seats into one giant family suite. I definitely need to try that someday. I meet my flight attendant for the flight and immediately she begins with the five-star service. The flight attendant just came over, brought me a welcome drink. It's lime and mint and gave me a rundown of the seat. I am so excited for this. The plane taxis towards the runway and I get to witness my first ever rear-facing takeoff. To be honest, it doesn't feel any different. As we ascend to our cruising altitude of 35,000 feet, I kick my feet back and get comfortable. The seat is wide and spacious and there's plenty of leg room even for someone like me who is six foot three. I just ordered dinner, so while I wait for that to arrive, let's have a look around the seat. It looks like there's a secret storage compartment next to my seat. Let's see what's inside. Ooh, over the ear noise canceling headphones and a full bottle of water, not bad. But there are even more amenities coming, like this built-in chair massage. It is gonna be very useful for a 15 hour flight. If that's not good enough, the seat lays fully flat and the flight attendants will even do a turn down service for each guest, which we will get to. This small remote controls the TV screen and there are hundreds of movies to choose from. Or what is this? You can even read from the Holy Quran on your screen. That's a first for me. Come Comfort is a priority in the Q suite. Each seat is equipped with two pillows, a soft blanket, and Qatar Airways branded pajamas. And just like that, it is dinner time. As I fold my tray table down, my flight attendant sets the table and begins the service. Tonight's dinner will be a five course meal. They start me off with a saffron infused chai masala tea. That was a mouthful. It's one of the best drinks in the Middle East. The way the dining works in the Q suite is that it's on demand. So you can order anything you want 
want, whenever you want. For my first course, I'm served hot bread and olive oil infused balsamic vinaigrette on the side. I didn't even order this, but someone decided I needed to try this mini lobster roll. Hey, I'm not complaining. Although it looks like a funny appetizer, it tasted quite delicious. One thing I love about Middle Eastern Airlines is that they have so many non-alcoholic drink options. I'm going to be going buck wild on the free-flowing sparkling grape juice tonight. And of course, if I don't take a selfie for Instagram of me sipping on a drink in business class, did I really even fly it? It was about this point when I realized I cannot believe they serve food this good on an airplane. Look at that face, pure disbelief. I ordered so many dishes that I actually forgot what everything was. Good thing I still have this menu on hand. Course number two is a roasted sweet corn and jalapeno soup. The soup was creamy and paired perfectly with the toasted garlic bread. How am I ever going to fly an economy again after this? Ooh, sweating a little bit, that was hot. Disregard this, um, <clears throat> happy dance. As you can tell, I'm just a little bit excited that courses three and four have arrived. I'm served chips and guac coleslaw and crispy carrots to accompany my grilled Atlantic cod. Everything tastes amazing. The roasted baby carrots have crispy garlic on top and with the fresh squeezed lemon. Delicious. I'm trying not to talk too loud so the flight attendants don't think I'm weird, but it's hard to hold back my excitement. I'm at 30,000 feet eating some of the best food I've ever had in my life. At this point, I've been eating for nearly two hours now, but there's always room for a chocolate dessert, right? Someone might have to cart me off this flight when we land. Wow. As if I'm surprised that it's good. That might have been the best meal I've ever had on a plane. One of the best parts of flying in first and business class is exploring the different amenity kits. My seat is so big that I actually lost my kit here for a brief moment. Ah, there it is. Right when I open it up, I'm hit with the scent of expensive perfume. Yeah, baby. And then I spot these purple socks. Let's get those bad boys on. Stylish. The amenity kit is from DiptyQ, and I'm sure I'm totally butchering that pronunciation. I'm not bougie enough for all of this. The kit comes with face lotion, chapstick, and a toothbrush with toothpaste. Is this toiletry bag made for females? It smells quite perfumey. Let's investigate. I shut the wrong way. That is so strong. People around me are gonna hate me. That is so strong. Clearly I don't belong here. Now that I smell like roses and butterflies, I'm going to enjoy a hot tea and put my seat into relaxation mode to watch a movie before bed. The headphones are true noise canceling and this pillow definitely added to my comfort. Movie finished, I think I'm going to try and get some sleep. It is time for the PJs. There we go. While I was putting on my pajamas, my flight attendant turned my seat into a bed. It's about 11 p.m. now, and my goal is to sleep for only three to four hours, so I still have time to enjoy the rest of the flight. With my provided eye mask on, I will see you in the morning. Well, good morning. I slept like a baby. I'm not sure who coined that phrase because speaking from experience, babies really don't sleep, but hey, we'll go with it. I wake up somewhere over Eastern Europe. My body thinks it's 4 a.m., but it's 3 p.m. in Doha. Oh baby, jet lag, here we come. I spent some time editing a new YouTube video before enjoying these incredible views out the window. And speaking of, if you're a fan of window seats, even the bathroom has fluffy cloud views. I am starting to get a little hungry again, so I think I'm gonna order some breakfast. The flight attendants told me to push the flight attendant call button whenever I wanted to order anything, but I still hate pushing it. I pressed it, I did it, I hate it. Hi, good morning. She must have been waiting right outside my door because she responded in about 2.3 seconds to my call. She took my order from the a la carte menu and I think this is my first ever candle lit breakfast. Hey, that's a nice touch. For breakfast, I tucked into this scrambled tofu and avocado toast, although I did struggle to get it cut. I prefer light breakfasts and this combined with a raspberry smoothie hit the spot. Okay, I probably didn't need to order a second smoothie bowl. Yeah. I definitely didn't need to order that, but don't worry. I'm going to work this off later. My body clock is so messed up right now. I'm eating breakfast, but the sun is setting out my window. <laughs> Check this out. 
Look at that. With my table cleared, all there was left to do was kick up my feet and enjoy the final moments of this flight. All in all, this seat was fantastic, and I believe it is deserving of the world's best business class. Is it worth $9,000? Probably not, but there are ways to book it for much cheaper, which I'll share shortly. For now, the crew begins preparations for landing. We're shown a promotional video of Doha, which gets me super excited to see the city. And the sky is clear. It's been a pleasure having you aboard today for the flight. I hope you have enjoyed it. And passenger with connecting flight, we wish you a very safe journey. Thank you. It is now time to visit the famous Al Morjan Business Class Lounge. I hop in this elevator and make my way over to check-in. The Al Morjan Business Lounge is supposed to be the nicest business class lounge in the entire world. I'm heading up right now, I can't wait to see it. The first thing you notice upon entering is this massive central water feature, grand high ceilings, and seemingly endless spaces to sit and relax. This spiral staircase wrapping around a chandelier leads you to one of two restaurants. There are sleeping pods, a game room equipped with Xboxes, and a business center. Restaurant number one is sort of like an upscale deli. It serves sandwiches, sushi, and snacks 24-7. And the second restaurant. Well, let's go check it out. It's a sit-down restaurant where you can order a la carte meals. And yes, everything is included and there is no limit to how much you can order. Hummus is so good you can like literally just spoon it out and eat it. Uh oh, I'm in trouble. What really stood out here to me was the staff. As soon as I landed in Doha, I had a craving for baklava. They didn't have any at this time, but a waiter went into the back and a few minutes later surprised me with this. That's five star service. Remember how I said I would work off all of this food? Well, I wasn't joking. Right next to this business class lounge, there is a full spa at the airport here. And if you book any of the packages that they offer, they give you free access to the gym, pool, sauna, hot tub, you name it. So I just booked the cheapest thing there was, which was a 30 minute massage. And now I get a workout. Oh, and I had this entire infinity pool to myself. This is awesome. I'm literally swimming laps and watching people go through security at the same time. This is a first for me. I had the best 30 minute massage of my life. I then sat back and enjoyed the hot tub and was able to take a nice hot shower to end the day. As I make my way over to the sleep pods in the lounge, here's exactly how I booked this flight. If you go to Qatar Airways website, you can book this same route from Los Angeles to Doha for just 70,000 points. Those points can be transferred from a credit card into your Avios account. And even if you don't have credit card points, you can always buy these points for a lot cheaper than the $9,000 price tag. Okay, it has been a long day of flying. I thought I was going to sleep great, but yeah, jet lag is rough. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.